I am not okay. Over the past four years, Apex have released 18 heirlooms, three heirloom prestige skins, and one crime against humanity. And I decided to buy all of them. Most of them twice, because I switched to PC. I'm very broke. And today I'll be winning a game with every single one of the 18 melee heirlooms in Apex to see which I perform best with and which of them quite simply shouldn't oh exist. God. Spoiler alert, there's quite a lot of 4K plus games in there. This took a really long time, so your two seconds to like and subscribe would really help soothe the pain in my brain. And without further ado, Club card accepted. I started off my adventure by crawling around on my knees begging to die. Don't revive me! Don't revive me right now! It isn't safe to revive me, mes amis! But my teammate Nacho refused to let my misery end before it even began. So I injected a mysterious green liquid I found on the floor into my body and used my cringe radar to locate the nearest enemies. That is cringe over there! Get one clipped, bro. I nearly one clipped this vantage on her way up the stairs, but after she found the world's most convenient armor swap, I decided to chase her onto the roof and deny her the escape. <laughs> oh. My teammates then both perished and left me to fight off the rest of the teams on my own. Now, wait the hell? Wow, absolutely incredible. But on my way to res the boys, I couldn't help but feel like someone was watching me. Nah, whatever, I'm sure it'll be fine. And after the team of two fresh spawns finish off the team with two Rampart Special Gold Arthria ones, Purple Shields, and one Timmy, we figured it was probably a good idea to explore the rest of World's Edge and see all of the new- I'm just kidding, we ran straight back into Fragment. What do you mean that was close? I'm literally so healthy right now. And so with one squad left, it was a 1v3 to finish things off in our first heirloom game. Would I get lucky and get a free dub? Or would I get a lifeline three stack? Everyone's favorite to try in 1v3. I had taken out their most important legend, but was still left with the near impossible task of rotating into zone as Watson. All they had to do was hold the edge of zone with that 30-30, and I'd have no chance of- Oh. Well, how's that happen then? 3.4k damage and 16 kills later though, we come away with our first heirloom win. And up next, we have a story of Valk, an L-star, and a Corsic being shot in the arse again. I love this game. The drop was probably the most exciting part of this game. I spent about 30 seconds just poking this bloodhound in the face with my spear. I proceeded to use the 1 to 2x on the prowler for the first time and actually kinda liked it. I, I swear I'm not just some kind of creature. Before dropping from height, using this clueless Bangalore as a trampoline and launching her and her team back to the lobby. Six squads later, I'd managed six more assists and one kill which is honestly pretty sad, but probably not as sad as seeing this Newcastle desperately trying to revive his Ash right in front of me. Let him like, in what world does this work out for you? Then a bold wraith showed me why hopping around in circles on one leg is not a viable movement strat. I one-clipped this Loba 
and we won the game with 3k damage and 12 kills. Going into game 3, we had the knife which I really do think looks like a curvy metal banana. Huh? Don't- that- that's probably not- very tasty. And this was Broken Moon, so it's pretty unsurprising to say that after cleaning up the first team, we had to run across the entire map before we found anyone. I'm so glad this map is out of rotation. I found this wild caveman fuse in his natural habitat, which was pretty cool. You don't, you don't see that very often. But the best moment of the match was when Pathfinder threw himself at a pre-made 3 sack with a lifeline and left me and Rafe to 2v3 them. Truly thrilling gameplay. We finished off the final team who were just chilling in a building, because of course they were, with a lifeline, and I won the game with just over 2k damage. But if you thought the skill level of the last lobby was bad, just wait until you see game four. I'm talking rookie four, rookie five level players, R rookie five. I queued into this lobby at 5am on a Monday morning because I'm an absolute urchin and I don't sleep. And when this octane took the gun from my bin, I'm gonna be honest, I thought it was over for me. Yeah, as you can see, very interesting behavior. After grabbing some loot and healing up, I did what all good Wraith mains do and launched myself into the closest enemy squad. It was around this point that I realized the enemies I was fighting were... Uh, I don't... I, what do you say to that? And after sending the local Lost Octane back to the lobby, I decided it was my chance to chase a big game. What I found was a lifeline sitting in a corner. I just felt bad at this point. My man Giovanni's just trying to play, dude. I took myself over to Cascades and fought a few gamers along the way. Definitely not nearly dying in the process before securing the 20 bomb on a fused player and taking a morning swim. This is why 20 bombs aren't that impressive, guys. And after taking down this catalyst, I realized the only way to feel good about this was to kill the closest lifeline I could find. There you have it, ladies and gents. 5 a.m. EU lobbies on a Monday. Truly some organic gameplay. Rev's heirloom is easily one of the coolest in the game. It's just a shame it's for a character who is a literal turd. Okay, you know what? I forgot that Rev can silence Lifeline. He's definitely not a turd. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. I then spent the next 10 minutes being pinned behind some doors by an absolutely cracked gamer with a wingman and waiting for Jack's 60 FPS brain to figure out how to restart the game. I got bored of waiting and tried to use my S tier ultimate to push a nearby fight, but Mr. Gamer Man with his 100% accuracy took out my totem. But don't worry, I'm sure he remains a good legend. Jack finally returned and we killed off the remaining enemy squads before hopping in a trident and getting roasted by my random bloodhound.
Honestly, it, it was probably deserved. But I'm Revenant, and I don't like being insulted. So I took out my immeasurable gamer rage at Bloodhound's insult by absolutely obliterating the nearest lifeline in a drive-by. Yeah, res that one, you little goblin. After getting fart bombed, we went back into Sola and Rev sent a team. It was very cool and epic. I love Rev sending people, it, it feels so good. And before we knew it, we were down to one other squad. And after seeing a stinky, sweaty, no life triple bread revenant on the banners, the last guy left and we won. Five heirlooms down and 13 left to go. Mirage was up next and. Oh shit. As Mirage, I did Mirage things, shooting enemies and wiping squads. It was truly a gamer moment when I bamboozled an enemy, and even cooler moment when this fuse ran straight into Nacho's face. Overall, Mirage was a legend, and he won the game. I really enjoyed this legend, and hope you can tell by the passion in my voice. Then we had an even more exciting legend to play, Crypto. Fun fact, Crypto has zero abilities in Apex Legends. All of his abilities come from his drone, so technically the drone is the real legend. Where's his heirloom respawn? After stroking my sword a bit, I pulled up to Terraformer and showed the world why you should never mess with a toe. Crypto. Cri crypto. And if you think those fights were decent, just wait till you see the final fight. Right, okay, we're doing this again. Following up from the big bad toe was Oxane, Olympus, and Night Fox. Now I think you'll agree that the crypto game was just so much better than this. With such a fast start in the bag, I was already having a blast. The only thing that could possibly make this better would be- Twelve kills down, I needed to keep up the speed if I wanted to get the 20. So I did the only reasonable thing and injected myself with unknown substances to make me go brrrr. Don't do this at home, kids. Nice. Enjoyed that. So did I, Jack. So did I. What I don't enjoy, however, is Lifeline. Yes, I'm allowed to say that. I literally farmed over 10k kills on her. So here's the Lifeline game. Yep. That's literally all you're getting. In Ash's game, we kick things off by slapping up a core stick in a lifeline before making extremely hard work of this random duo in the middle of the map. My teammates seem pretty happy with the clutch though, so... I love you. That's nice, I guess. I don't love you though. We then took out some rock dwellers, thanks to my teammates' really, really good, definitely not annoying pings. Thank you, Valk. Thank you. Another lifeline tried to run in and ruin my day, but unfortunately, she was absolutely clueless, and I managed to put her down and her Roboy boy. Roboy? What is a Roboy boy? I'm just gonna leave it in. Hello, little Roboy boy. One third party later, my Valk decided she was out of here and left me to 1v2. This is exactly why I don't love you. And when it came to winning the game, I mercilessly put down the teabagging pathfinder without missing a single shot. 
Yes, I really am just that good. Now, you've all seen me play as Loba a million times by this point, and I was expecting a pretty high damage game for her. The problem is, though, you're not really dealing a lot of damage when you just walk up and one-clip everyone. I'll take it, though. What the fuck? What a game. I continued into Hammond in hopes of finding some damage, but instead, I walked up and- I'll take it though. Maggie and Cat were the next to be aim assisted, and sadly, Squid Waddle 2 didn't have what it takes to 1v3. Rip Squid Waddle. We then ran around for over 5 minutes, only to find two of the last three teams sat on the edge of the zone in a pub. Very cool. I took out the frustration of having my time wasted by slapping a rape in the face and finally met up with the local Loba in my area to win the game with 14 kills and 2.3k damage. GG mouse man. The one clips from the last game made me realise that sometimes I do got that dog in me. So Bloodhound was the obvious next pick. One banana basket, Pathfinder, Octane, Valk and Maggie later. You could say I had my tail up. <laughs> my job wasn't finished there though, as when there's a lifeline alive, there's always work to be done. Please leave me alone. I showed off some more of my Apex Predator accuracy and definitely didn't chase this poor vantage while in Bloodhound ult before coming back and sending the 15th party along to the lobby with her. Apart from this bang, who is clearly from some other planet, I, I don't know where these guys are coming from, honestly. The next logical step was to find the closest caustic barrel infested house and chill inside it without shooting any of the barrels. So that's exactly what I did. Apparently the caustic team didn't like having a random heavy breathing mask individual running around their house though, so they shot at me with multiple automatic machine guns. Before I was able to fully resolve the dispute though, the neighbours clearly weren't enjoying all of the noise and came to complain themselves by marking us to be obliterated by heavy artillery. Pro tip, don't do this to your neighbours. The big fella next door then smacked me in the head with some kind of club, but I was able to crawl away and receive medical attention. And having survived the near-death experience, the smartest play from here was to heal up and run straight back into the house enough to sending the last few residents home and climbing out of the frying pan that is round 2's zone. I hit every single one of my shots on this very cool, very fun character and chopped up his friend with an axe. At this point though, I had started enjoying breaking into people's houses and fighting them, so I continued that trend onto the next team we found grabbed some ammo and continued into the next one, but this time it wasn't going to be so easy. I'm not a monster, bloody spice. I just got that dog in me. Sia's heirloom is another one of the coolest heirlooms in the game, which made me feel a little bit better about running around in pubs with three pred badges and playing Sia on a Tuesday. As far as storm point games go, this one wasn't too bad though, since everyone was fighting pretty much in the same area all game, and I finished up with 2.5k and 11 kills. And next, I had the chance to finally play my boy, Parthy. My 1v6 in the bag, Gibby had one thing on his mind. To which my response was, no offense Gibby, but please stop. We worked our way back to the edge of ring and I somehow managed to farm up to 2.5k damage without a single kill. I rezzed Wraith, Wraith died. Gibby ran in from zone, Gibby died. I manoeuvred my way around the zone as best as I could, getting the occasional knock and receiving Maggie's balls in my face in return. Lovely. I kept poking and poking until eventually I saw my charm. Game 15 was Wraith's return, and it was time to see if the original Kunai could live up to the performance of the recolor. <coughs> Ow. 
As we rotated in towards Terraformer, I begged for some light ammo like all Wraith mains are legally required to do each game, and when I finally had some, it was time for a 1v1 with potentially the only legend sweatier than a Wraith. In between fights, Mirage asked me the all-important question, and before I could even reply, my teammate gave him the juice. Sorry, Offman, I didn't realize you were a massive legend. We rotated through Promenade, killed off some fellas trying to respawn, and I found a Kraber on the way into zone. Yes, the controller player always gets the Kraber. Yeah, that's probably going to be the worst thing I've ever posted on this channel. I do this for a living. I don't want to linger too long on Caustic as he stinks really bad. In his game, I shot some people, popped some cells, gassed some buildings, shot some more people, had a short coffee break, shot even more people, and won the game. Yippee for Stinky Man. Hooray. Big Gibber took up the second to last game, and just like with Stinky, it was a pretty mid game. There were a few nice moments here or there though, as me and Nacho were a duo for most of the game, and at one point, I had to pull off a pretty decent little 1v3. Never mess with the big red brother. And after that, it was a fairly straightforward 2v3, which definitely wasn't close at all, and no, we were, we were perfectly healthy. It was fine. To win the game and move us on to my final heirloom. Hooray! Now, before you turn away thinking we're in for another mid-game, think again. This was my 18th and final win to get, and I wanted to go out with a bang. So yeah, as you can see, it was a pretty chill start to the game. On our way out of the wall, we rotated through Command Center and through the two players chilling inside, before making our way down to Jurassic, only to find the local wildlife watcher. I asked Loba for a Loba ult on the way into the final zone, and she didn't give me one, so I acted like a mature adult and gave her mixed signals on the ping she made. Yes. Using jump drive. Nah. And before we knew it, the last team ended up making their way over to us. There it is, everyone. Rampart's toes. 17 kills and 4k damage with Rampart finishes off the heirloom challenge, and yeah, I'm now officially broke.